Welcome to Adam's Athenium. Let's take a look together through the news and records of our times as we try to shed light upon the unvarnished truth. Thanks for coming back to listen to this episode about violence in today's society. As I look around the news of the world and the safety channels that I watch on YouTube, I've noticed an increasing trend in violence and violent stories. I'm sure we all have. Whether we're talking about police being killed for simply wearing their uniform, or Trump supporters being hunted down and murdered in Portland, Oregon. I see domestic violence calls where a woman is beaten or killed, or the police are attacked by any number of parties, because, as we know, domestic violence are the most serious and potentially problematic calls for law enforcement. I see stories of Disney employees being arrested uh, for drug and sex charges with minors. I see CNN anchors being fired for covering up for sexual assault allegations aimed at their brother. I've watched Houston, Texas start to look like a third world country with the types of carjackings, store robberies, and burglaries happening there. Even in Indiana, professional South American gangs are targeting wealthy neighborhoods and specifically only going into a master bedroom where jewelry or expensive items can be seen through a window. We've seen the U.S. government label law-abiding citizens as terrorists and lock them up with no charges filed. We've seen Antifa and BLM terrorize neighborhoods and cities for years. But where are the lockups? Oh, that's right. Charges aren't usually applied or they are bailed out on all charges by the likes of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's staff and assistants. Obviously, we have all heard about the war and Russia and Ukraine and the propaganda coming from their side of the world. I haven't done an episode on the conflict yet, as I try to only spread truth here. And what's coming from Ukraine and Russia is almost always translated, chopped together footage that doesn't quite make sense with the, vintage, with the footage you're actually watching. American journalists haven't uh, been on the ground giving us nightly live coverage of the battles in the streets so we're receiving primarily second-hand information, or in a court's terms, hearsay. I can't 100% verify and trust what I see and hear from Ukraine. All I can say is that Ukraine should defend itself from what seems to be an unjust and unprovoked attack. Was it? I'm not sure. But as of right now, my opinion is that I support the Ukrainian people defending their country. So we talked about war, we talked about issues at home. What about smaller examples of violence? A young girl's face is nearly ripped off entirely, off entirely by two dogs she was dog-sitting. She had previously met these dogs and all seemed to be fine, until the night when she went to dog-sit. Now, allegedly, the dogs don't react well to strangers or people at the door, so was this negligence on the owner's side, or was it just people not understanding the dog behaviors from both the sitter and the owners? Or was it that society seems to lack uh, a proper respect for our coddled mindset of animals? Most dogs are fine with all people, some are picky, and some just hate humans, or mailboxes, or their food bowl. To some degree, they are individual creatures with a degree of a pers personality or persona to themselves and we, as humans, operate differently. Some people get dog bites from an escaped dog or a dog who wasn't on a leash. This, to me, seems to be because we have forgotten that dogs aren't man's best friend, period. Dogs, in a way, descended from wild wolves, and in the not-too-distant past, many dogs were used for hunting animals or humans. Sometimes dogs were and still are used for sport, or raised on the skin of their owner's enemies. Animals, whether domesticated or wild, still and always will have some essence of their wild side inside. That's not the animal's fault. We, as humans, need to respect that they are different creatures from us. We think and operate differently. Let me bring you a more modern form of violence. One of my favorite YouTubers, Tim Pool, has had his channel, or more specifically, their property, swatted at least six times. What is swatting? 
This means that someone calls in a fake 911 call, usually stating obscene violence taking place or hostages or bombs may be involved in the storyline. This usually results in a lot of law enforcement showing up in a hurry with guns drawn. Well, when you are in a basement recording an episode and you suddenly have police officers in your live studio conducting searches, I mean, people have died from these actions. Imagine you're a YouTuber or a video game streamer up late at night and someone uh, watching your channel who can find personal details about you or your house calls the police anonymously to report such a horrific crime. You, being relaxed and honestly probably distracted, suddenly get a loud banging or knocking on your door. Maybe you hear the police shouting, police. Maybe you don't. Some people have thought their home was being invaded and have produced firearms to defend themselves and were ultimately killed by the police. Sometimes police officers are killed in these situations. Fortunately, for the YouTuber I watch, nobody has ever been harmed in these swatting incidents, but the response from local police authorities has increased dramatically over time. On one of the last swatting calls, the bomb squad got deployed to Tim Pool's house or surrounding studio area. Violence. It's a part of this world. There's no doubt about it. I'm not here to pretend like the world is pretty and full, is, is a pretty place full of rainbows and butterflies. It certainly can be, but danger and evil exist at all times. E evil, evil people, greedy people, and desperate people all make choices. Usually it's choices to make their pain go away at the expense of someone else. Murderers aren't strong. A dangerous man who can kill in an instant, but doesn't, because he knows and understands the consequences, as well as having respect and dignity for himself and the life of others, is stronger than your typical murderer. Men and women should be able to know and understand the monster inside of them, as Dr. Jordan Peterson would say. What do we do about it? First, my friends, and please take this as loving advice and not me patronizing your life, as I know nothing about, about you. But we first have to look at ourselves. What did we do, or not do, that allowed the world or our local community to get the way it did? How did we attempt to fix it? Or did we just make a Facebook or Instagram post with a hashtag? Because, yeah, that makes so much change. Second, how do you want to be treated? Do you want to have 197 things going wrong in your life all at once and then be stolen from for the last bit of anything you had? Then don't be a thief. You think you're tough or a man's man because you hit a woman? You're a coward. You are a spineless, pathetic coward. Some guy cut you off on the highway. So what? Who cares? Are you okay? Is your car okay? Then leave it be and don't be a road rage asshole, jeopardizing other people's safety. And while we're on the topic of cars and safety, for the love of God, can people please stop using their freaking phones while driving? I'm so tired of the person in front of me slamming on their brakes because they were texting and not paying attention to rush hour traffic. Or hell, I've been rear-ended by this same type of idiot. And you know who I see using phones the most while driving? People in their mid-40s and older. The same people who had a conniption fit about people my age texting and driving when smartphones really took off. We changed. I guess you picked up our bad habits. Third, breaking into people's property to steal their things, or stealing from people in general, or putting people's lives in general risk of serious harm or great bodily injury. If you get shot, stabbed, beaten, killed, maimed, or arrested during the events of your crime, guess what? I don't care about your skin color. You had it coming. People who play stupid games win stupid prizes. You want to bring a knife to rob someone who owns a gun and they kill you? Defending themselves? I celebrate the responsible gun owner. 
and will do everything I can to tarnish the name and reputation of someone who would treat another human being that way. To conclude, I'm sick of the violence and the excuses for it. Excuses are like assholes. Everybody has one, and I'm disgusted by it. I'm here to call it out, to show its ugliness to you, to show it to you in a way that you can't hide from the facts. I'm not calling the world to be angrier. No, no, no. I want less of that. I also understand how angry the world is, and that as a responsible adult, we need to be able to protect ourselves from evil people who inevitably walk this earth at all times. Defending yourself from your life being taken is completely different from whatever excuse you have to kill someone, destroy their character or reputation based on lies, to be rude or to assault or rob someone. I'm asking you, are you one of these problem children? Do you like to hit women? Do you like to engage in sexual activities with minors? Do you like to think of killing someone who is different from you or your opinion? Then you, you are a coward who deserves no life or attention. You are a waste of space and oxygen. I hope that if life brings you one thing, it brings you to reality and that you see how your activities have, have affected uh, your community, your life, and the world around you. I've said it before, and I'll run out of breath saying it again. We have to start treating people better than how we want to be treated. It's time to look past sexual orientation, skin color, or political affiliation, and just get to know the person next to you. Love them, and have their back. Helping someone is the most selfish thing you can do because the satisfaction you get from the feeling of helping somebody beats most other emotions. You want to feel happy? Help someone else to be happy. You want to be heard? Open your ears to someone else. Everyone wants to live a long, happy life. So why do we have to waste our time and energy hurting other people? Why can't we heal ourselves and then mend others? My Athenium will always be a place for friendship honest and open dialogue, mitigated and led by facts. You can always come here to be reminded that you are special. The infinite potential for good that is inside of you is what I hope to see shine out from every subscriber, fan, and follower of my channel. Let's leave this world a better and more loving place than what we found it as. And that will wrap up today's episode. Don't forget to share this video with any and all of your friends as this message is important and needs to be shared. If you agree with my message, please subscribe as I upload new videos every Thursday. I look forward to seeing you back here next week.